but companies that issue shares are diluting their owners and they're basically telling you we're insanely overpriced. So we'd rather just give you shares instead of burdening our company with debt. What are shares outstanding and why are they important? This is a very commonly overlooked metric, but it's extremely important to understand. When a company is publicly traded, they have a certain number of shares outstanding. Let me pull it up right now and show you an example. So in our software, you pull up Apple. You go to the income statement and scroll all the way down. And right here, you'll have basic shares outstanding, 15.89 billion. That means if you take 15.89 billion and multiply it by the share price, that is the market cap of the company. That's all the company is doing there. They're just splitting up. That's why when I hear people look at the share price, I laugh. Because here's why. This is the share price of Apple, $150. Billion, $150. The market cap is $2.42 trillion. So remember, $2.42 trillion market cap, $150 per share. Now, let's pull up Berkshire Hathaway Class A shares. $461,000 per share. This is not a typo. $461,000 per share versus Apple at one fifty. dollars How many times more is this? 3,000 times more? But what's the market cap of, of uh, Berkshire Hathaway? Ready? $677 billion. A little over one quarter of Apple. So even though the share price is 3,000 times higher, the market cap is one-fourth the size of Apple because Apple splits up its ownership by more shareholders. Look at the shares outstanding for Berkshire Hathaway. 1.47 million shares outstanding versus 16 billion shares outstanding. Now, let me do a little bit of math for you to explain this. Let's say you have two companies, company A and company B. They both make $10 per share. Sorry, $10 total. Total profit. Company A has 10 shares outstanding. And company B has five shares outstanding. Company A shares makes $1 per share. Company B shares makes $2 per share. If you multiply it by an average of 15 PE, you get $15 price here and $30 price here, right? But what's the market cap? $30 per share times five shares is 150 bucks. $15 per share times 10 shares is $150. They're the exact same value. Why? Because they both make $10 per share. They're just deciding, company A decides to split it up by 10 people, 10 shares, and company B by five. Please don't be the person who only focuses on the price per share. That is the sucker's bet. Get that out of your mind. Don't look at a company that's selling for $200 a share and say it's more expensive than a company who's selling for $50 per share. It's completely different. When I was in high school, I was a sophomore in Algebra 2 Trig, and my teacher was a track coach. And somebody in class asked him, do you wish you had Nike shares? He goes, oh, I wish I could, but it's too expensive for me. At the time, it was like 50 bucks before splits and et cetera. And I remember thinking to myself, but the market cap is what matters. And I remember thinking to myself like, no, he's got to get that. He's my, he's my teacher. But 99% of investors out there don't understand this concept. So there's something I call the silent killer of investing. And that's when shares get diluted. So let me give you an example. Let's go pull up our good friend, Kathy Wood, her ARK investment in Coinbase. I believe this is one right here. Well, let's pick up one that's been around for a longer time. Let's go to Roku. She has a big holding in Roku. And Roku has been around for a long time. Now, Here's the key. Back in September 2016, they had 86 million shares outstanding. Now they have 139 million. Now, there's that other YouTuber from Russia or wherever he's from. He won't disclose where he's from. He thinks that when you issue shares, the market cap goes up. It does not. This increase in shares outstanding merely means they are diluting investors from back here. So what does that mean by dilution? Well, let's go back to our example of company A. Company A with $10 in profit and 10 shares outstanding, a dollar per share. And you multiply it by 15 PE, you have $15 per share as a price. Let's say the company grows their profit to 
They went up 50%. That's incredible. But they issued five more shares. $15 in profit divided by 15 shares is still $1 per share. Multiplied by an average of 15 PE, you still have $15 per share as the stock price. Even though the profit went up 50%, if it's matching the number of shares outstanding, you saw no benefit as an investor. You got diluted by sharing the pie with more people. Yes, the pie grew in this situation, but it grew by the same amount that profit grew. Now, does that always happen? No, there tends to be more growth in the profit than shares outstanding. But why do companies issue shares? Well, very simple. Let me ask you a question if you're a CEO out there. Let's say you're the CFO or CEO of your company and your stock makes a dollar per share. And the historical average is 15 PE. So your stock should sell for 15 bucks per share, but it's selling for 70 right now, 70 times earnings. If I'm the CEO or CFO, I'm thinking to myself, geez, that's way too overpriced. But we need money to go expand to try to grow our profit. We could borrow debt or we could issue shares that are expensive. And here's why you want to issue shares of expensive. Let's say you want $700. You issue 10 more shares. You get your 700 bucks. If that share price falls to 15, you still got your $700 of the company, but now... What'd you sacrifice? There's something on your balance sheet. But if you take $700 in debt and your stock price goes from that $70 down to 15, you still owe $700 in debt. That's why companies issue more shares. They issue more shares when their stock price is overvalued. That's the right time to do it. There are a lot of value investors out there who won't even invest in a company that has more shares outstanding today than they did 10 years before. But companies that issue shares are diluting their owners and they're basically telling you we're insanely overpriced. So we'd rather just give you shares instead of burdening our company with debt because you get the cash at 700 bucks and the stock goes down. They don't care. Now, if you're an underpriced company, let's say your stock is making a dollar per share and the price of the stock is only seven bucks. That's a seven P.E. If you're issuing shares, you're issuing cheap shares to the market. You don't want to do that. And that's the thing that people never look at. I never, ever hear everyday investors talk about shares outstanding, but it's such a crucial thing to understand. When I look at Kathy Wood's ARK Investments, all of the companies have all these massive share dilution. To me, that says the company owners and CEO aren't after the benefit of the shareholders. They're after the benefit of themselves. They're going to sit there and take as much money as they can to try to grow the crap out of the company as opposed to doing what's right. Now, can I say unilaterally, it's always good to buy shares and always good to, or always good to sell shares out? No, I cannot say that. But it's something to keep in mind as a way of looking at things. I'd prefer a company just not take on extra shares unless it's absolutely nosebleed, I guess. But even then, People don't really pay attention to that. And that's a problem. That's why you're lucky hearing this video to understand this. So I need you to do me a favor. I need you to share this video with other people who could find use of this and subscribe to the channel because this is a silent killer to investing. People never pay attention to this. And that's a problem. And also, if you like our software, everythingmoney.com, $7 for seven days. We're running a special right now. Take a look at it. $7 for seven days. Thank you very much for your time.